Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomist coming at you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS-337 of the 1-6 scale Ray and BB-8 from Star Wars The Force Awakens. For the package, we've got a very standard kind of Star Wars sort of look. We have seen this kind of design many times already with uh, previously released Star Wars figures. You got the uh, logo right there, you got an image of the figures, and then you got this little V sort of pattern uh, on the side here. You can see that that pattern kind of continues on, and then you got Star Wars down the bottom. You got Star Wars here in the top of the package. On the back of the box, that you got the various warnings and contact information. And then it is a bit of a shoebox package, so you just slide it up just like so. And then on the inside again you have this little insert with a, a kind of up close image of Ray and then a little further one with a BB-8 next to her. And then you can see you got a really nice desert background going on there. This little section here slides out and what you're left with on the inside is obviously uh, the clamshell with all of her accessories, you know, the figure itself, all that kind of stuff standard in terms of packaging on this it's not really anything that we haven't seen before so it does look pretty good but it is kind of bland by some other packaging standards but uh, for the packaging that is about it for it so without further ado let's get these guys out here and see how cool they actually are all right guys so here we have ray and bb-8 open up and out of their packaging and much like all Hot Toy figures, you do get the instruction sheets for both of these figures. As I said, this is a two-pack that does feature both of these figures. There is a separate set available that does just have Ray. Unfortunately, though, if you want to get BB-8, you have to get this pack. And obviously, there is a price difference. But uh, for the instructions, uh, BB-8 is actually fairly simple to kind of go through. It basically just shows you how to attach uh, the little antenna on his head, that his head is attached via a magnet, how to turn the lights on, how to attach his little uh, interchangeable parts and then on the back here it shows you his uh inner self-balancing mechanism which i'll you know kind of demonstrate here for you in a little bit but uh for ray it gets a little bit more extensive because with ray you actually get two kind of looks for her. one is the uh, scavenger sort of look that features you know a whole lot of extra clothing the mask you know the hair wraps things like that and then on the back here you got how to attach the backpack uh, her goggles the uh, shoulder pad the different weapons things of that nature so again always you really want to make sure that you go through these very thoroughly so that you know exactly what you're able to do with the figures and at $290 for this particular set you definitely don't want to damage anything but starting off first with the accessories for her, I'm actually really very impressed with how much stuff that you get now as you can see she does have this right hand that is just kind of relaxed just kind of hanging down to the side and then you have a left one that does a little bit more of a you know, kind of gripping hand so you do have that uh, you also have a right hand that is a little bit of a trigger finger sort of hand that obviously is really good for holding things like a blaster uh, she also has a right hand that is much like that left one where it's in this kind of the holding position allowing her kind of to grip things uh, the fingers are a little bit pliable so you can kind of stretch them out to get you know the fingers around various things uh, she comes with a left hand that has a much more open kind of grasp but uh, probably more designed for like her uh, little staff right here so uh, let's see that uh, i mean that's a little bit loose but oh actually you know what it probably works really good with the lightsaber yeah that's probably what that's more or less designed for i mean it's a more open hand i mean you can have different options and things like that and then you have a left hand that is just in a standard fist but these are fairly, you know, plain, uh, you know, smaller feminine kind of hands. We've seen these before with some of the, you know, Marvel figures. Uh, then we do get some really nice gloved hands. And this is obviously uh, for her scavenger kind of look. Uh, but real great detail. Coming in here to take a little bit closer of a look at that, you can see some real great molding and paint detail on there. I mean, you come around here to the finger and you can see all that sculpted detail. And then, again, real nice paint variation kind of going throughout there just by themselves. You can see the fingers and the palm look really really great as well uh, but as you can see this is a, a kind of trigger finger sort of uh, pose uh, you, you can use it for the gun if you want to you don't necessarily have to you have a right hand that is in that kind of grasping kind of position as well but again real great great detail all the way throughout this very very impressed with how these uh, uh, gloved hands turned out uh, she's got a more open kind of hand Again, for whatever pose you, you may want to use uh, this particular sculpt for, you got a left hand where she's pointing her finger, uh, like, go down that way, guys, I, I don't know, something like that. Uh, you also do get a left hand that is kind of similar to this, but it, it does, you, as you can see, have a little bit more close of a thumb to the actual rest of the fingers. So it is a slightly different actual sculpt, but similar nonetheless. 
And then you get a left hand that is just in a fist, you know, obviously to punch any of the, the people on Jakku that are kind of messing around with her. So lots of different hands with her. Now, in addition to all those hands, you do get uh, two additional wrist pegs, which is always very nice, especially with the smaller hands. They do necessitate smaller pegs, so having extras is very handy. Just in case kind of thing. Uh, as you can see, she does come with her little blaster right here, which does look really very nice. This is obviously the blaster that uh, Han Solo gave to her. Uh, she was uh, kind of reluctant to take it initially, but eventually did, and it came in handy fairly later on. Uh, but great detail on here as well. that You can see the sculpting looks really very nice. They nailed it and really captured that unique kind of look that the blaster had. You can see you got this nice little uh, blue section here in the very front. You also have some really nice silver paint on here that has a small wash on here. I mean, it's not very dirty, but uh, you definitely can see that there is some wear on it. And then you got a nice uh, a black handle right here. So really cool to see this as uh, one of her accessories as well. Uh, as a, a part of her you know, scavenger outfit, she does come with her uh, goggles. These are a little bit stretchy, so as you wrap this around, there's going to be a little bit of a tension on it that holds it into place fairly nicely, but you can see some really nice green lenses in there. Uh, again, coming in here, I guess I should just stay zoomed in because we're going to be doing this a lot. Uh, you can see that uh, she does have this little that bit here on the side. I'm not 100% certain what that is, but again, real nice detail on there. You can see that it does have a kind of stitched sort of look around the, the actual eyes and everything. So, I mean, really very, very cool looking detail. You got some nice, you know, gold bits right here, kind of as little brackets or something like that. So overall, really nice, that pair of goggles. Uh, she also does come with her a little arm guard kind of thing. And again, you got that little stretchy material, uh, like on the inside here that does have some uh, tension on it. So you can put that up on her arm and I'll show all this on here uh, in a little bit but you can see that it, it really is a very kind of tattered sort of look on there I mean kind of ripped around the edges and things like that just basically giving her some extra support on her arm it kind of looks like a mask to be totally honest with you but again real nice sculpted detail you can see some nice dirt and everything kind of thrown in there you know via some of the paint applications and things of that nature so really very very cool uh, and then like I said she does come with the outfit that you can put on her uh, now I'm going to show you you all this stuff here when it's actually on her but for example you have her little uh, head and you know face kind of that uh, wraps I guess uh, you just put this in here and, and again I'm going to show all this off here on a little bit but you got that little bit right there that covers up her face and then again you're going to have the eyes that are going to be something like that so you do have that you have this little extra bit right here which will go around her she also does come with her backpack which does have some nice detail on here uh, these little pieces some of these move um, like this part here, uh, I mean, some of them detach uh, and slide out. Like, for example, this little piece here, this can come off. I, I don't know exactly what it is. It kind of looks like a grenade, to be totally honest with you. Uh, so that slides off. Uh, does this slide out? This looks like it might. So yeah, this slides out as well. You just kind of push it from one end and then kind of pull it out. Uh, again, uh, what that is, I have no idea, but it does kind of move out. These little pieces right here can also slide out. Maybe these are like little tools or something for her speeder bike. I, again, just guessing. I have no idea. But the fact that all these uh, pieces can be slid out and everything is really very, very cool. Uh, these little pieces here, these can actually slide out as well. What those are, I have no idea. But you got her whole little backpack thing here. Uh, does this move? Um, some of these don't come out. Uh, so you don't want to really damage anything. And the instructions don't really even show you being able to take these out so i would probably use caution when doing it this kind of moves around so you might be able to move that this feels like it's actually kind of glued in to this back section here so while this is a separate kind of piece down here it's it feels like it's glued to this leatherish sort of section right there so that can't remove come around here you got the straps and everything real nice detail you have a very full leather kind of look which does come across very very nicely you got the little uh, section right here with uh, again i i don't know exactly what that is but you got a nice little metal chain on there so uh very cool that they include her backpack you got all that kind of stuff thrown right in there and again i'm going to show how to put all this stuff on here in a little bit so uh just hang out bear with me for a little and just tucking that back all in there you get the little you know, clamshell that, that protects all of it she also does come with her staff which again real great detail you got the the strap right here real nice the fabric on there you got some nice sculpted detail in here with uh, some kind of fabric looking stuff just all across this entire thing uh, very very simple but great amount of detail throughout the entire 
piece. And you can see that it's actually fairly long. It's actually taller than she is, and you, you can see me do that. But real great detail. Again, you got some nice uh, painted detail in there, giving it a very dirty kind of look. Just very nicely done. Uh, now, she also does come with the lightsaber of Luke Skywalker. Uh, you saw the movie, spoiler alert, I, I guess I should say, but here it is. And you can see that it does have a very nice blue lit up kind of the beam coming out here, uh, coming in here to take a little bit of a closer look at the detail on the actual hilt itself. Great detail on here. Real nice paint detail throughout the entire thing. You got some black kind of thrown in there. You got a little red bit right there. All in all, very, very nice. Some bronze right in that section. And yes, it can detach. It just kind of pegs in there. So if you wanted to have her walking around and reaching out and handing this to Luke Skywalker, you could do it if you wanted to. Uh, the resistance suit version is coming out. That does come with this as well. So it's personal preference, but a very, very nice lightsaber. Uh, it doesn't actually light up in terms of illuminating this beam, but as you can see, that is a very nice look. That gives a very uniform kind of look to it. Uh, I really do like that. And this was definitely an accessory that uh, people were, I mean, we didn't know this at first because they didn't want to spoil anything from the film. So it wasn't until the film came out that they unveiled that this accessory was coming with this figure. It was actually kind of funny when they put all that together. Now, I'm um, setting off BB-8 to the side. Now, that's all the stuff that you get if you get just the standard uh, Ray figure. You also do get this nice display stand. You got the Resistance logo. It says Star Wars. And th this one says BB-8 and Ray. Hers will just say Ray. But then you have this little pillar right here with the adjustable cradle. Pretty standard uh, for Star Wars kind of stuff. But one thing that is actually pretty cool, if you do get this as a two-pack, you also do get this little uh, additional diorama piece that replicates some sand. And all you do is you just kind of set that on there. And as you can see, you got a little little indent right here that nicely fits BB-8. I mean, it sits there very easily. So if you do get this two-pack, in addition to getting BB-8, you also do get this piece. So this is where that extra price comes from. If you wanted to get just Ray all by herself, she's going to cost you $225. But if you get the two pack that includes Ray and BB-8, you also get that you know extra sand piece. That's going to run you two hundred ninety dollars. So that you know sixty five dollar price difference includes this little guy and this section right there. And then getting this stuff kind of uh, off to the side. As for BB-8, this is actually really very very cool. Uh, some people are talking about how they don't necessarily think that it's the the right size. Uh, they think that it's a little bit too big. Honestly, looking at pictures. It doesn't look all that bad, and I actually really like the way that this turned out. You can see some nice dirt throughout the entire thing. Uh, now, people have kind of complained about the orange on here. Uh, it does have a little bit of a dirty orange kind of look to it. Not necessarily brown, but probably not as vibrant of an orange as it really should be. Now for a comparison, here is the Sphero version. And as you can see, there is a substantial size difference between the two. But putting them right here with that Ray herself, you can see that the Hot Toys version does scale better than this little guy. It's not to say that it's bad or anything, but this is a much better scale figure. And then you can see that there is a brighter orange here than what's on the Hot Toys version. Honestly, I would probably say this is a little bit too bright and this is a little bit too dark. It looks like it should be more in between. But the detail, I mean, especially when you look at the Sphero one, I'm really impressed now that I'm looking at the Hot Toys version and comparing it to the Sphero one. I mean, that is actually a really uh, nicely detailed piece. And really, both companies kind of nailed you know, the look for this little droid. I'm, I'm really very happy with how this turned out. Now, you do have some assembly that is required with this. The antenna do have to get plugged in there. But that's actually for fairly easy. You got the little two antenna right there. And then it does have have what they're calling like a self-balancing mechanism uh, really all that is, is is like there's a magnet here that you can see just like grabs hold of that and then you can rotate it around and you can see as you spin that around the head kind of stays up to the top it's not all that good honestly and if you're rolling it you can see that his head just kind of wants to go forward and then again if you go back the other way I don't have a lot of space right here but you know it does take a little bit of help one thing that I've noticed though is if you actually hold it here and do that it actually works a little bit better so you can move it around and have him kind of uh, just having fun moving around it but it works a little bit better when you use the head kind of as the leverage point or something and it magnetically attaches so i mean it does 
kind of self balance uh, but then you can see kind of wiggles there so you want to move it around and then you're just kind of futzing with it a little bit uh, he does have some light up eyes you come around here to the bottom you can see that he's got the little rolly sections that they actually don't roll but they just kind of elevate the uh, the bottom of his head off of the actual main ball itself but you got the little switch right here and then when you flip it you get his eyes to actually lighting up uh, and then coming in here you can see you got a little bit of a red light on the inside there and then a very bright blue light right there so really very very cool on it I, I do kind of wish that that was a little bit brighter of a red light that's in there I mean as you can see I mean you don't get a lot of light coming through there but that's something that the Sphero one didn't do so I mean I guess that's not too bad but in general this actually turned out really very nice I, I do like the paint detail with the the dirt and everything on here everything just in general came out really nicely uh, now he actually does come with a couple accessories which is kind of cool uh, this is his little I want to say that this was his little shocking doodad uh, he has a little metal tip on here what you need to do is rotate this around to find the, the little uh, section uh, he has got two little pieces here we go the, and you can kind of see it because there's a little section right here that you can put your little fingernail in and pull that piece out and then you take this little piece and then you just peg that in there just like so and actually I mean rotating this around it actually does articulate up and down there's a little hinge right there so uh, I, I don't know necessarily which way is up and which is down with them but it, it does have like that little shocking kind of thing and that actually looks cool I, I really dig that I think that's neat that they gave him his little deployable accessories I kind of wish he came with a little lighter because I thought that was hilarious when he gave the little thumbs up via a lighter and then you got this little section right here which uh, I think this is his little tray where he would uh, get the, the holographic projector thing. I mean, this was like his little uh, hidden storage spot. So you can move that around and then you can have that little section right there. So you put that in there and then it would slide back in and, you know, I mean, it would kind of hide and such. But you can see that that's a similar shape and then it just pegs in there very easily. So I, I love the fact that they gave us those little pieces. I, I think that's a great little touch. And like I said, for 65 extra dollars to get this, I, I feel like it's worth it because not only are you getting this, you're getting a couple little accessories with them and you're also getting the little diorama base. So price wise, I definitely think that is worth it. And then obviously, like I said, you got the little indent there that you can kind of position them where he's going to sit there, you know, on the little kind of sandy section. Now, coming to Ray yourself, like I said, you have the ability to have a couple different looks with this figure. Here we have her all dressed up in her scavenger sort of look, which is how we were first introduced to this character. Obviously, you know, you got her little staff here, uh, but the accessories have all been put on her. You can see that she's got her little uh, shoulder guard. I got her backpack on here. She's got an extra uh, kind of sash that comes down across the uh, torso body. You got a little wrap that goes around her waist, and then you got the little the headpiece right here with the uh, goggles on. Now, th this is a little bit precarious, honestly, to put on. Uh, a lot of the parts are actually fairly easy, but this whole mask kind of thing is a bit, I guess, problematic, uh, especially when you're going to be putting it on. Now, uh, you can see it's very tight to the actual head, and you can pull this down, but again, it, it, it's kind of stretching it, uh, and her glasses aren't even on there straight, uh, but uh, you can see that, again, you can kind of create that kind of look where she's got a more open mouth now, and honestly, when, when she's like this, I really do get a very Queen Amidala kind of look for her. Uh, this section here, you can lift this up if you really wanted to. Like I said, this is a little bit stretchy, so you can bring this up and bring that uh, across the top, exposing more of her face. But I mean, in, in general, this is a really cool look for her. I, I don't know if everybody's going to be displaying her uh, with this kind of a getup, but I, I do appreciate that they included all of it. it. It is a nice touch. It is, like I said, the first time that we saw this character. And in general, I think it, it does look pretty good. I just really worry about putting, you know, these uh, head scarves on uh, just because of some of the detailing that's on the actual hair. And I'll show that here in a little bit. But overall, really very nice. Now, to, to get all this stuff off, uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go in reverse. To get this shoulder piece off, you just take the hand off like so. Take this little wrist guard off like that. And then this entire sleeve slides down, exposing her entire arm. And then you just slide this down over just like that and like i said you got the little elastic kind of straps in here that hold it very snugly to the actual body and then uh, you just replace all this stuff by sliding that back up like so 
take this piece put that back on just like that let me make sure I get that position properly then bring the actual hand back in get that all the way up bring the hand in and then you just peg that back in just like so so that's really easy to do that that I have zero problem with uh, the goggles here again those are just stretchy little pieces you just take that off just like so bring these arms back like this and then you just slowly slide get that out of the way slowly slide the backpack down off her uh, shoulder section again being very mindful of the various parts because uh, it does kind of get caught on things so just slide that down just like this set that off to the side come around here to the back you got this little extra uh, waist piece that just uh, actually buttons on there so just pull this apart be very careful when you're doing it uh, one I will mention something here so as you pull that apart ah, you get nervous okay there you go little plastic clasps that just hold it on there uh, now this piece well okay now I'm gonna come to the head itself uh, th this is where it gets a little bit tricky because this is very tight so you kinda have to pull this and slide it over the face and then you pull it up but you have to be very very careful because on the inside here you have these little strands of hair that uh, can get caught and did it get actually caught under yeah it got caught a little bit these are fairly thin and fragile pieces of plastic that replicate the little hair pieces that kind of dangle i don't know how well that's coming across because they're so tiny so zooming in here you can see what i was talking about these little pieces like i said the hair is all molded but they put these little extra uh, plastic pieces to kind of replicate the hair coming down here when you're putting this on you're kind of pushing and you're forcing and you're kind of stretching it around her head it, it makes me nervous about these little uh, hair pieces and, and you have to take the head off to actually get this whole section on there it's a little bit easier to do and one thing that I will recommend doing they don't say it in the instructions but when you're actually doing it I would actually recommend taking this entire section turning it inside out uh, kind of just going like yeah, if I can do it for you going like this going inside out on it noting where the front of it is obviously and then you take this you put it on the bun here and then you pull it down over the head but like I said as you're doing it you're kind of putting uh, unnecessary pressure on here so if you're gonna do it make sure you're very careful and you go down because the plastic does mold in a downward kind of way if you go up you could obviously damage these and then when you're pulling it off you do want to be careful that these aren't caught on it you know making it kind of bend up and possibly snapping off that would be really kind of unfortunate because that is a very cool look for it but you can see that it is amazing likeness to a daisy ridley who uh, plays this character i mean i think that looks absolutely terrific she kind of has you know a blankish kind of stare with a slight opening of the mouth i think it looks really good uh, is, is it exact no i i kind of get a almost young sigourney weaver sort of look for her uh, i i mean i don't think the sculpting is bad i think it is really very nice but it definitely is not I would say as spot on as I would like. You know, if I was giving a number rating, I would probably give the sculpting uh, for the portrait something like a, a seven and a half out of 10 or something. And now this piece right here, I actually uh, modified this a little bit. The uh, button right here is very fragile. So what I did was I just glued that on. So now instead of unsnapping it and possibly risking breaking that, what I just do is slide this up over just like that it, it, it creates a little less you know pressure on that little button it's not something that i actually liked so I, I wanted to make sure that i strengthen that so that there's no damage or anything but and there you have all the extra accessories off and you have her secondary look which is how we saw her primarily through the rest of the film it wasn't again until the end of the movie that we saw her in a different outfit, which is coming out later on from Hot Toys. But uh, I do like this. I, I think it, you know, really plays into the character that you know, she's a scrapper. And, and, you know, I mean, the outfit here really does kind of show that she's a survivor of sorts. I really do dig that. But as you can see, real nice detail on this entire figure as well. I mean, she's basically just wearing, you know, rags and scarves kind of covering her. But real nice sheer detail on here. I love the actual tailoring. You got some kind of tailoring 
herring down here at the edge, which looks really great. She's wearing the little, you know, cutoff pants. You can see she's got her little sack right here that kind of wraps around. Uh, that doesn't open or anything, I don't think. No, that doesn't open, but real nice detail on that as well. The sculpting on the actual portrait, though, is phenomenal. It looks really, very good. I like what they did with the hair. Like I said, I just, I, I worry about those little uh, string pieces over time, but if you're not, you know, putting that, you know, headscarf on over and over again, I think you're probably going to be okay. Uh, you can see that she's got these nice uh, tattered kind of sleeves. Everything on here just you know, nicely replicates the outfit that she wore on a desert planet, basically. I, I think that they did a great job in terms of the design, you know, from a film standpoint, and then recreating it here in an action figure form. Uh, you got the nice boots right here with some nice detail. Does limit the actual uh, ankle articulation because it goes up a little bit high, kind of about a third of the way up her actual shin. So it, it does kind of restrict the movement there. I mean, it does rotate and everything, but uh, for the rest of her articulation, the head is on this nice ball joint, so you get a nice range of motion looking left, looking right. You can look up and down a little Little, and then you got a little neck joint right there that does allow you to kind of look down as well So you do get that pivot and then it also does angle side to side the upper body is a little bit softer of a, a material So there is some flex and stuff in the actual neck section now the shoulders move uh, in and out very nicely They rotate perfectly freely as you can see that there's no uh, restrictions there They do rotate here at two joints or I should say flex up here at two joints at the elbow uh, She also does rotate at the upper part of the bicep uh, the wrist do rotate this one is a little bit more limited because of the uh, little wrist guard you can take that off if you wanted to but you got the standard rotation there and then you also do have the when, when you find the joint the little flex forward and back so you do have that uh, standard range of motion then you just kind of shift that down kind of hide that uh, she does have a waist rotation upper ab di kind of diaphragm joint so you can get some pivot right there the hips move forward they move back they move in and out the uh, cutoff pants here are very loose so they do get a nice range of motion but one thing that i will say is that as you do it and move things around you may expose her knees which uh, you can see that you have a little and i actually like this you got this little kind of stretchy material here that kind of tucks underneath kind of giving that uh you know cut off kind of look i i do kind of like that that's really cool looking but you can see that you do have an exposed knee that uh, people have complained about especially when they see her on her speeder bike which is something that the uh, hot toys has teased us with but uh you can hide that by bringing that down a little bit it doesn't look all that bad when it's just kind of standing there you, you don't really see those at all so it's not something that bothers me really all that much but uh it does make a case for you know the seamless joints a lot of other companies are doing seamless joints uh i don't know why hot toys hasn't jumped on the game maybe they're concerned over longevity of that material or what but you know figures like this where you do have more exposed skin and th there are other figures that are coming out in terms of female figures that you know it does raise concern now she does rotate at the upper part of the thigh she does have the two bends here at her knee and then the ankles basically just rotate i want to say i'm just gonna pull it off yeah okay so you do have a ball joint right here and it's a fairly long peg actually as well but uh you just peg that in there uh so you don't get really any ankle tilt uh forward or back or anything i mean there's a little i mean you can see it that's that's about it uh but not much uh in terms of ankle articulation because of those boots it's it's just the design of the actual the film so I, I can't really fault hot toys too terribly much on it but uh, it is something that you know does restrict the articulation but in general real real nice looking figure I think this turned out very nicely uh, if you're a Star Wars fan this is definitely a character that you probably really got attached to in the film same as with her little buddy BB-8 but in general this figure did turn out really well like I said you have two different options you can get just the Ray figure which comes with basically everything except for this portion and that is cheaper than if you get the entire set that includes that ray bb8 and the actual diorama piece ultimately i think these two kind of go together so i do believe more collectors are going to want to pick up this two pack as i said there is a 65 dollar price difference but i do feel what you are getting for that extra 65 dollars is worth it you know yes i mean bb8 really doesn't do much other than have you know like a, a head that you know automatically moves around uh, the lights on the head you know i mean you do have that you got some great paint detail but it still came out really very nice you know kind of at the heartstrings of a lot of you know star wars fans she's a strong confident and powerful character that i feel fits very nicely with the rest of the very strong characters in the rest of the star wars universe
So all that being said, if this is a set that you'd be interested in picking up, she is available right now at Sideshow Collectibles. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow where you can check out availability on this set, as well as the rest of their 1-6 scale Star Wars figures from Hot Toys and Sideshow Collectibles. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please like and share it. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way, you never miss a future review of mine. And as always, until next time, I'll talk to you later.